What is going on everyone? Welcome to episode two of Good Bugs here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the very good bug, the red worm. Bad bugs, bad bugs, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad bugs, bad bugs. So when it comes to worms in the garden, any type of worm is good. Now we are adding red wigglers into our garden and that's because red wigglers are very fast reproducers and they're very fast eaters. Red wigglers are known to be one of the fastest growing and fastest eating types of worms at our disposal. And that's why a lot of vermicomposters, people that actually raise worms to create worm compost or worm castings, will use red wigglers as their worm of choice. Now, we're gonna be releasing them into the garden here today because what we wanna do is we wanna actually encourage our worm population to, uh, to actually stick in our garden and continue to break down organic material because worms do a few things for us. Worms are really good bugs because of the fact that they help to break down organic material, they help to loosen the soil, they help to create worm castings, which is nutrients for our plants, but they also can help to consume bad bugs. Believe it or not, as a worm is uh, inching its way through the soil, it actually has a one-way digestive tract, and basically dirt goes in, organic material goes in, and organic material goes out in the form of castings. It digests the castings, but in the process, the gut of the worm has billions of beneficial bacteria and fungi that live in the worm's gut. And when it passes that out in the form of castings, that beneficial bacteria and fungi can actually help to combat bad bacteria and fungi in the soil. And so not only can they help to turn tons of organic material into beautiful soil and beautiful food for your plants, but they're also helping the ecosystem of the garden to actually increase the amount of good bugs in your garden. So the first thing we wanna talk about is the habitat that we're putting them in. So when you put them in your garden, you wanna make sure that your soil is very loose, it's very rich in organic material, because that's the food source of choice for worms. But you also wanna make sure that it's damp. Very dry soil is counterproductive to worm growth because of the fact that worms, they do not have a, a hard skin. They're not like you and I do. They excrete a slime and that slime coat is actually what helps them breathe. And so because they breathe through their skin, dry soil can actually end up killing them. And so having, uh, having a damp soil is very important. Now, what we also wanna make sure of is that we have a soil that, like I said, is rich in organic material. If it's very sandy or very heavy clay, you'll find that the worms will be okay, but they won't thrive. And that's because worms like to move throughout the soil. The average red wiggler can move roughly five square feet in an hour, believe it or not. And so this bed is 50 square feet. And so if it can move five square feet in an hour, it can basically clear the entire length of this bed in about 10 hours. That's incredible how fast a red wiggler can move through the soil, especially if it's incentivized to find food. And so by having a good soil that it can move through very, uh, very fast can help it to not only feed faster, but also reproduce faster because, well, they don't go on top of the soil that often because there's lots of predators like birds and other things flying around. So they find their mates basically through the soil. And red wigglers are known as communal composters. They're communal worms. They like to be in clusters and bunches. And so earthworms are very territorial. They kind of have their own space in the garden. That's why when you find an earthworm, you typically won't find an earthworm or another earthworm that's not a mate within about five to 10 square feet of that other earthworm. And that's because they're very kind of, they're very territorial over their space. But when it comes to red wigglers, it's very common for them to create a nice ball and that's kind of how they live and, and cohabitate. So uh, it's very important to have good loose soil. But like I said, also having good soil cover. Um, we're gonna be mulching our soil as well. So once we get these plants growing up, they're gonna be a living mulch that's gonna help to hold moisture near the soil. But if you don't have a living mulch, I'd encourage you to mulch the soil with something like grass clippings, uh, mulched up leaves, straw, um, pine shavings, wood chips, something to cover the soil to hold moisture in the soil and keep the soil cool. Worms do not like hot soil or dry soil. So when it comes to releasing your red wigglers in the garden, it could not be simpler. Basically, you wanna pick a spot here that's gonna be a spot where you want them to live. Now, if you live somewhere further north, you are gonna find that there's a range of survivability with red wigglers. They're gonna survive in your garden just fine, but generally about zone five is that cutoff point where most of them are going to die over the winter. They'll still be a very valuable asset in your garden throughout the growing season, and some may end up surviving. But if you live further south, you'll find that more are gonna survive and thrive in your garden 
then will die. So just kind of knowing their range of survivability will kind of help you out when releasing them in your garden, but also knowing that because they're communal, they like to be together. And so I find that uh, this, this little tub of worms here, I will do per raised bed. So if I've got 10 raised beds, I'm gonna release about 10 tubs of worms. There's about, I wanna say, about 300 worms in this, if I recall correctly. And so I'm gonna release 300 worms per bed. And so what we also wanna do is put them all together. Don't spread them through all throughout the bed. We're gonna put them in one spot and then let them go on their own. All right, so what we're gonna do when we release our worms is dig a little hole. I'm gonna dig a trench here because we don't wanna just release our worms right on the soil surface. That is a calling card for things like birds. And so, because we don't wanna just feed the birds, I'm gonna dig a small little trench here. Now, in that trench, to encourage them to stick around, have some beautiful little babies, we're gonna give them some food as well. So I've got some, uh, hey, Nova. So Nova is the garden uh, watchdog. Nova, come here, Nova. So Nova is, is Taylor's dog. She's our, our resident videographer and video editor. And um, so in a couple episodes, you guys saw Nova running around back and you're like, that that stray dog was getting pretty close to you. I'm like, that's not a stray dog. It's like one of the nicest dogs ever. So that's Nova. So everybody say hi to Nova and uh, she keeps the bunnies away. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some celery here. We just had some, some old celery and we're just gonna throw it down in the trench here and encourage the worms to get some food. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna chop it all up here. Get it all chopped up. You can also just throw it in a blender too and blend it. Food processor, whatever works. There we go. Little trench there. And then we're gonna take our worms and we're gonna release them in the garden. Woo-wee. Dang, that is crazy. It's a huge ball of worms. Look at that. Wow. If you don't like worms, well, you definitely won't like that. That's super cool. So having these worms in the garden is an incredible resource. Like I said, not only are they gonna be uh, consuming all that organic material and helping to feed our plants, but also uh, digesting the material and uh, excreting things like beneficial bacteria and fungi, which can really help the soil, help your plants. Um, those beneficial bacteria and fungi actually, believe it or not, um, like uh, azosporilium um, and lactobacillus, they are wonderful beneficial bacteria that actually will attach to plant roots and help to mine minerals found in the soil that the plants can't uptake. Very, very beneficial. Um, but then also what they do is they help to aerate the soil. This is a very underappreciated benefit of worms. And in fact, they've been called nature's rototiller for years because of the fact that what they do is they burrow holes in the soil. And those holes are little tunnels and those tunnels can help to increase the amount of aeration in your soil but also can help to, uh, to actually increase the amount of drainage in your soil, which is really important for increasing root development, um, increasing the overall environment, the ecosystem of the soil, right? Because beneficial bacteria and fungi, they do not like an anaerobic environment. Anaerobic means uh, without oxygen. They like a very aerobic environment. And so worms help to actually move the soil, digest the soil. And when they work the soil, they make it very aerobic and that helps to increase the aeration in your soil, which can help uh, you know, beneficial bacteria and fungi to thrive as well. So um, it's a very beneficial thing in your soil. And a lot of people, you know, they know about the benefits of worms. They try to increase worms, but rarely do we see worms as something that we could actually add to our garden to increase their numbers and to actually help them to, uh, to kind of multiply faster than they would naturally. Now, I will say that the final thing that we were gonna talk about is if you don't want to actually add them to your garden, you can actually create a worm farm. We've done this in the past. We've done a lot of vermicomposting videos. And if you're interested in that, they're very, very simple to do. All we use is just simply a, a plastic tote. We drill some holes in the bottom. We add something like, uh, like peat moss or compost to the soil for them to use as bedding material. And then we simply mulch up things like that celery. Um, we blend it up with, uh, you know, it could be carrot peelings, other food scraps from the garden and we blend them up and feed our worms. And then we use the worm castings to create a very nutrient rich fertilizer for our garden, a free resource for our plants. So um, you can definitely do that as well. Like I said, we have lots of videos on how to do that. And it's just a, another method of not only creating a closed loop system for our garden, 
but increase the amount of beneficial insects in our garden, which can help us to grow a better garden. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw, uh, throw a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know if you're still excited about this series. We got lots more coming out in partnership with Nature's Good Guys. So I'll post links to where you can get their products in the description box down below. Again, not a sponsored video by any means. This is just something that I've been wanting to do for a long time because it's super important that we talk about the benefits of beneficial insects. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care.